Finally. Ever since the Makita 40 volt line was announced, chainsaws have been the things you guys seem to have wanted to see the most. That's got nothing to do with it. And it does all this. Um, this is a 40 volt chainsaw. A lot of you, of course, want an 80 volt chainsaw, and I'm sure they're working on it, especially if you look at the model numbers. Um, but this one is a top handle or arborist style 40 volt chainsaw. And um, it doesn't normally come with a whole lot of bolts. I picked this up from Handy Hardware yesterday and chucked a few of the other things that I purchased at the time in the box just so it was easier to carry out of the store. Uh, while I was there, I got a new chain for the 18 volt version of this saw so that we've got fresh chains on them both when I put them up against each other. So no complaints, okay? While I was there, I also talked to someone who wanted to see a specific test. That's actually the extra chain there. Someone there wanted to know if this was capable of doing a specific task and we will do that specific task later on in the video, hopefully. Anyway, let's take a look at it proper. Tool, bar with cover, chain, tool for adjusting the chain. Bottle of oil, almost looks like a bit of an afterthought that because it's not branded with Makita or anything. Um, yeah, but at least I got oil with this one. I didn't get oil with my last one and other people did. Somebody must have taken the oil out of my box. Anyway, so 100 mil of bar oil there. And just like magic, it shall be put together. And there she is. This is the UC004G Makita 40 volt arborist style chainsaw. It has a 350 millimeter long blade or 14 inches. Now that's not a huge bar length, but it looks quite big on this tiny little saw. Now there's a heap of things I want to tell you about this, but I also want to go chop down some trees. I've been waiting for this. I've got some trees that are in my way, stopping me from doing a job, but I didn't want to chop them down with anything else because I wanted to review this tool and I didn't want to have to chop down more trees. So I'm going to go do that now. And then we will put it up against its 18 volt predecessor, which as you saw, I bought a new chain for, but it's a completely different size chain. It's the right size lengthwise, but this is a way narrower gauge on it than this one that's on the tool that came with it. Even though I ordered the exact same number that this saw supposedly comes with. So whether they've modified the specification since I purchased this tool, because that's the, I'm pretty sure that's still the original chain on it. it. Comes with an Oregon chain. So these chains are basically the same. So do I sharpen this one or do I stick on that thinner new one? Uh, damn it. What to do, what to do. How about a quick... Ooh, nice. I'm going to do a plunge cut test now. I'm going to push the bar straight into this tree. See how we go. See if it stalls. It actually did better than I thought it would and when it was jamming, I think it was just jamming because it was catching on a stick as it was coming out the other side. So yeah, not too bad. I'll do another test like that soon. See how we go. But anyway, this tree's got to go.
Well, that chewed through the battery. Um, this had four bars when I started, and we're down to two already, and it's pretty warm. I go chuck it on the checker to see how hot it is. It is pretty hot today. Uh, it's 28 degrees in the shade here at the moment. That's Celsius, of course. So I'm guessing this battery at the moment, the inside is probably more like 50. But not only did I have to cut it down, I now have to get the stump and all the roots out because I'm putting a retaining wall through here. Like that over there. It's coming all the way through here. So yeah, that's going to be fun. So what's it going to read at? Bearing in mind it started at probably 30 degrees anyway and it's a stinking hot day and it's been sitting in the sun while I've been using it and stuff. And those, well, it hasn't been long though, didn't use it for that long. I cut those trees all within the space of 10 minutes or less. <laughs> uh, but the battery's now been sitting for about 5 minutes while I fluffed around getting the checker out and getting the camera sorted and grabbing a drink. So let's take a look. I think it's probably more like 60 or 70 inside now. 50 I think might have been a bit low. So let's take a look. Battery 50% charged like I suspected and 52 degrees okay I was closer with my first guess so it's around 20 to 25 degrees of heat build up inside those cells from using it and it being out in the sun Right now I need to compare the three of these, don't you reckon? We've got the 18 volt, the 18 by 2, the 40 volt. Let's put them up against each other. First of all though, I need to sharpen the chains and clean them up a bit. I've decided to use the chain that is on this tool rather than that new one that I bought in the box. That way all three of these chains are 90px chains. So they're as close as they can be to each other. So I'll give them all a sharpen and give them all a... Ugh. There's a lot of gunge in there, holy moly. <laughs> so I'll give them all a clean up and while I'm doing that I'll tell you about the specs and all the other stuff on the 40 volt model. So what do you want to know about this thing? Well it has all the same basic things chainsaws have. It's got the brake on the front here. It has a covered, which is good because the 18 volt one didn't have a little cover on it. It's got a covered area for adjusting your oil to your bar. It of course has a bar with a chain on it. It's got metal bucking spikes, pretty thin ones but they're there at least. They've modified the design of the oil cap which at first I thought was good because I hated the other one. It's always jams up too tight and I, you can't get the damn thing open, you've got to grab a screwdriver. And so this is the one they've come up with now. It looks like it's sort of hard to get to to ping the thing up but you push there and up it pops and then you turn it. Problem is it seals up just as tight as the other ones do. Uh, wasn't too bad then. Uh, so it's even harder to turn because you can't stick a screwdriver in that and you're more likely to break this uh, than the other ones. But it doesn't protrude past the front of the saw like the other ones do on the other two saws that you'll see in this test. So yeah, I'm not sure if I like that or not. I don't think it'll last as long as the other way. The other way is a bit more bulletproof. We've got a chain deflector for when your chain comes off the bar to stop it swinging back at you. And we have a chip deflector here, rubber chip deflector. So when you want to use the tool, just like the other battery Makita chainsaws, you push the power button. It will light up green. Sometimes it'll flash green, sometimes it will flash red. If it flashes red, it means something's overheated, you've stalled, that sort of thing. Or the battery is flat. When you hold your finger on it, unlike the 18 volt version, nothing happens you don't get that extra torque mode. You don't need an extra torque mode. Because for starters, extra torque mode on the 18 volt one was, well, useless. The trigger is the same as the 18 volt version in that when you push the power button, like so, you have a few seconds, not many. There you go. 
to put your hand on this safety trigger thing here. So push that. Once you've got your hand on there like that, now you're sweet. Now you can hold your hand like that almost indefinitely. I don't know how long it stays on for, but a long time. And that way, so as long as you always have your hand on that position, holding that trigger thing down, you can then just pull the trigger whenever you want, and away you go. As soon as you release this, you've got about two seconds, and it'll cut off. See? Gone. So, when you're using it, when you're holding it, just hold your finger on there and then keep pulling the trigger. Else you're going to get very annoyed having to push this all the time. Although pushing this is still a darn sight easier than pulling a cord. With one of these, by the time you've actually managed to start your still chainsaw and let it warm up, you've already chopped the tree down and you're on your smoker. You've got the chain adjustment screw here, you've got the nut there for taking this cover off to get to your chain and bar. That's a captive nut which is quite nice, all very simple. It has a chain that moves at 24.8 meters a second or almost 1500 meters a minute, or what is that in feet? That's like 4880 feet per minute and it does that with a variable speed trigger so you can start it off nice and slow if you wish and then ramp it up in comparison the 18x2 both of them the top handle one like this and the rear handle both run at 1200 meters a minute and the little fella the 18 volt runs at 1350 meters a minute Without the battery, it weighs 3.8 kgs. This one weighs 3.2, so it's not hugely heavier for what you get. And this one without the batteries is 4.2 kgs. So my batteries are nearly all ready. I've got the last five amp hour one just charging up now, making sure they're all freshly charged. Let's just take a look. Don't want you guys to think I'm skewing the test. This is only a 12 charges, 41. It's a 41 volt max, that one, so it's ready to go. Oh, better get that off. I'll put this one on the... Oh, it's not sitting there. The 36 volt one. All good there. 20 volts, fully charged. Oh, it's only 11 charges, this one. And 20 volts, fully charged. Let's go grab the other one. Give me a moment. So this one fresh off the charger 21 charges 20.2 volts so slightly more than the other one we'll stick that on the 18 volt one now I've decided to use 5 amp hour batteries on the 18 volt tool and a 2.5 on the 40 volt one of these is equivalent to one of these in that they're both the same cells this is one of these batteries wired differently so that it's 36 volt instead of 18 I could put a 5 amp hour battery on the 40 volt, but I want to do a cut test and see how many cuts, potentially anyway, we'll see how we go, see how many cuts I can get out of one battery charge and, well, this will take me half as long as that one will. So let's go do this, I'm going to use 100 by 100 rough sawn treated posts, it's 4 by 4 if you're in North America, and I'll do about 5 cuts each, we'll see how we go, and I'll just, just see if I can run them through just before they would stall, just to see how quick each one cuts. Uh, there's a good chance the 18 volt one will still stall anyway, because that's what it does. Anyway, let's do it. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Gold 
test, 18 volts. Cold test, 36 volts. Stall test. 40 Right, we'll take a look at the cuts in a moment, but first I thought it might be interesting just to have a look at this. The bar is reading 57, roughly, between 55 and 58 degrees Celsius. And what else is hot on this thing? Let's take a look at this red glowing square down here. Looks like the battery on the outside, 46 degrees. So, that's pretty toasty. Let's have a look at the internal temperature of that battery. The bottom of this battery is as hot as I think I have ever felt a 40 volt battery. So let's just take a look here. Yeah, 66 degrees on the outside. It is very hot. Too hot to hold almost. It's, um, shit. Yeah, you don't want to leave your hand on there too long. So on the inside, I think we're going for a record here. I think the hottest I've had a battery inside was, what, 70 something on the blower? We're gonna crack that. This is gonna be, what, 90 degrees, you reckon? Shall we go, shall I pick 90? Let's take a look. You see that all right? That's probably better. Ah, it's still saying there's a bit of charge left. I wondered if that would happen. I think it's just gotten so damn hot, it doesn't wanna work anymore. But it's still saying, what's that? 25% charged, 79 degrees Celsius. I was a little bit off again. But that's pretty darn hot, 174 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, you can almost start cooking inside that battery. So we'd probably get a few more cuts out of that if I let it cool down. I might um, chuck it in front of a fan. I might go and chuck it in my Makita fridge actually. And uh, just cool it down a little bit and then see if we can get a few more cuts out of it. At the moment though, it is flashing as if it were dead but it may be flashing because it's overheated. So that 2.5 amp hour battery, this is a different one, um, gave me 38 standard cuts in that piece of wood. That's the five initial cuts, a couple of straightening up cuts I did to get rid of some knots in between cuts and the ones at the end that you saw in quick succession. Uh, and then there was the stall test. So we're looking at at least 40 cuts. Um, probably more if you'd let it have a little bit of a rest and you weren't just going flat out trying to do it as quickly as possible. So, we'll see once it's come out of the fridge whether it will get any more out of it. But this battery here, 80 plus, easily. 
but you should get a bit more than two of those anyway with this battery it, it does put out a bit more oomph you get a bit more whack for your dollar with that one than you do over these ones so you're looking at somewhere between 80 and 100 I would imagine if you were cutting a completely square 100 by 100 post is that a reasonable amount I'll let you decide on that one seems okay to me but if you are using chainsaws all day every day you are going to go through a few batteries but is it easier to change a battery than to go and mix up fuel and tip fuel and then risk that catching on fire potentially and the smell when you tip it over yourself accidentally and it drips out and all that sort of stuff and it kills a bit of grass when you accidentally spill it on the lawn and shit like that you know there is a lot to be said about battery stuff but if you really want grunt yeah look at that just taking it out of the fridge and we're back to two bars I was dreading that because it means I'm gonna have to go do some more cutting it's still quite warm on the bottom let's just see what it is on the inside now saying that 25% roughly charge 48 degrees so we've come down significantly we've come down what 31 degrees but it's still about 21 degrees above air temperature in the shade at the moment so it has recovered so how many more cuts can we still get out of this supposedly there's still 25% of the battery charge left so does that mean we get what Ooh, maybe another 10 cuts might just chill it down a little bit more and then we'll go check it. 40 degrees C, let's go give it a whack. That's basically what the battery temperature inside would be if it was just sitting out in the sun anyway. So have we flattened that battery properly this time? Let's take a look-see. It's warm, not as warm as last time though. Yep, she is good and flat now. 63 degrees Celsius. 30.3 volts showing we're right down on all the cells. That's what it looks like when it's completely flat. And it'll be interesting to see here. Temperature, oh, still on the low. I thought there might be a, a high one on there now. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so we're looking at about 50 cuts then. So we are looking at at least 100 4 by 4 cuts with one of those. I think that's alright. What do you reckon? Let me know down below. And the 5 amp hour battery runs cooler than the other batteries. It's got twice as many cells as the 2.5 battery. This has got 10, this has got 20. So each cell only has to put out half as many amps to perform the task. So this gets much hotter than one of these will. So ideally, use one of those, your tool will cut out less and your battery will probably last longer. And if you were watching those tests thinking how wasteful he is, how wasteful just chopping up that perfectly good post. Well, take a look at this. That post was a little out of whack before we started. It was so twisted that I couldn't use it as a post anyway. So it was destined to be an impact driver screwing test post but today it has instead become a chainsaw test post. So when it comes to grunt, this is of course the easiest one to stall, the small little 18 volt one. And have you noticed, if you've got one of these, I'm sure you will have noticed, um, when you do stall this and you restart it, it stalls again much easier. And it stalls just quicker and quicker. And almost like it needs a rest or something. Once it's done that first stall, that's it. You know, it just it doesn't seem to have the power again. Whereas the 40 volt just kept smashing it. There was no loss of power that I felt, it just kept going and going and going and going until right near the end when it was about to cut out anyway. I was pushing pretty hard on those cuts and it wasn't stalling until like I say it was near the end of the battery life. And also with the stalling, this thing. I thought this one would be the least likely to stall probably, uh, but they've clearly done a good job with the 40 volt stuff. I'm really looking forward to the 40 volt version of this because this stalled much easier than the 40 volt one does. When I got this 40 volt one, I figured, what am I gonna use it for? Is it gonna be a replacement for the 18 volt? That's what I figured. I figured it's basically the same size unit as this one. Um, just got 
twice as much grunt with the battery and a longer bar. But because it's got the longer bar, in fact it's got a bar the same length as the 18x2 one came with, it's more of a replacement for this really. So depending on how you like to hold your hand. The back handle one, they both have their pros and cons depending on what you, what you want to do and what you are doing at the time. If you're wanting to do things above your head or up in a tree or something then the top handle is way better. If you're dicing something the way I was just doing it with that post, then the rear handle's sort of nicer because it's less force on your hands. It, the, you can let the saw sort of do the work a bit more. It doesn't require quite as much pushing down on the tool. But which one does this replace? I'm not really sure. It sort of replaces both of them really. I think with that new 40 volt, I don't need either of these. This one's supposed to be the equivalent of a 32cc and the other one a 30. The 40 or 30, don't get too confused with all the numbers here, um, but it, the 40 feels gruntier than this, it's certainly much faster, you can just feel the chain is whipping around so much quicker than it is on this. So yeah, I don't know, I think I might, um, seeing as they've got the same size bar, I think I might be able to replace both of these with that one saw. I do like the small bar on this though, for just little handy things when I'm shredding up stuff, I can just have it in one hand and whack, 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 it's nice and easy. Slightly more cumbersome with the longer bar, but the saw is still very light. I'm gonna have to think about it over the coming days. So what's my overall opinion of it? Yeah, I like it. It shits all over the 18 volt one. And I think it's better than the 18 by 2 as well. It'll be really interesting to see how good the replacement for the 18 by 2 is. The 40 volt version, which is meant to be uh, 12 cc's gruntier than this. So yeah, that should be a mean saw. Now I haven't used it on the 5 amp hour battery yet, but you should get about 100 cuts as I think I said earlier through 4x4 or 100x100. And that was dry too, if that was wet it would have cut easier. Chainsaws don't cut through dry timber as well as they do wet timber. I haven't actually used it on the 5 amp hour yet, I've been using it on the 4s and the 2.5s because why put a big heavy battery on it if you don't need to? Works perfectly fine with a 2.5 amp hour battery, so why not just use that? So that's the new Makita 40 volt XGT UC004G 350mm Arbor style chainsaw. That's a cool little saw. More 40 volt stuff coming up real soon. Subscribe and like and all that stuff. And I will see you on that. Cheers.